Hey everyone, this is Andrew Hess, and this is my SharePoint questions. I started this channel about a year ago, so I had a good little bit of a success. I've reached about 800 subscribers, so thank you everyone who has subscribed. Now that we have Power Apps, and we've written to SharePoint, or we've written to Excel, what can we do with that data? So I just want to give you all ideas what to do with the data once we have it in SharePoint and Excel. Now people love to do analytics, you know, your CIOs, your CEOs, your C-class people, they love to see red, yellow, greens. Let's give them some awesome things that they love to see. So we started off with this app at the end of last year and pretty much we have a new order and we can do a customer name with a product and we can write into SharePoint. So first we're gonna add and then I'll just, you know, just kind of throw some things in here because I want to see this data again. And for widget one, he bought 2000. Superman needs a lot of widget one. And we're going to write to SharePoint. So we just had uh, Superman buy a bunch of things in SharePoint. Now you have all this data here, right? And it's all linked by this order number. Now there's a really great way to see this data besides the way we're showing it right now. So if you go into your settings, then list settings, and you go into your view. In your view, you have, if you scroll down, so we're gonna scroll down a little bit, of course you can filter, right? We could filter on what we wanna see, but if you go to group by, and you change the group by, and we're gonna group by that product number, the order number, let's see if I can find it right here, order number. We're going to group by order number. Then we could group by, uh, you know, name if we wanted to, but for now, I'm just going to group by order number. So I'm going to hit OK. And if you notice, now my order number is here. It's, it has in parentheses four. We can see all of the orders for Andrew Hess in the order number. We can see all the orders for Bart Simpson. We can see all the orders for Superman. So this is just a great way to see the data. Another thing you could do is you can see that it's all closed right now. So if we went to list settings and back in here, right? So let's go back into the group by. Into the group by. There's a setting right here. And if you can see it, it says collapsed or expanded. You know, some people like to see it collapse first off, but I like to leave it expanded. So we're just gonna have it expanded right when someone clicks on it. So by default, it's gonna be expanded and it's gonna be grouped by that order number. I think this looks beautiful. People love to see this. It looks so much better than it did before. All right, now that we've grouped by our data, there's another. There's more we can do, right? If we go into this column here, the product, you'll notice that if once we click on that, we can do a group by right here, it's also there. But if you go to column settings, there's actually format this column. And pretty much we're going to do a, a conditional formatting. We're going to say add rule if product is equal to widget one. We're going to change it to that blue. And we can add another rule, right? Of course, product is equal to gear one and so forth. You know, I'll probably fast forward through this because I, I think you get it. All right, so now we've added colors to our, our SharePoint list right here. Now we could do all kinds of conditional formatting. There's more than just changing the colors. If you go in here and you do format this column, you can do things like data bars. You know, you can see you know that 2000 here is much larger than these other quantities. So, I mean, maybe this isn't the perfect setting for here. Let's let's change this. Um, I'm just going to go in here and manually change this 2000. We'll change it to 200 just so we can see those data bars a little better. When we go into quantity and we do uh, column settings, format this column, we can edit the template and say, oh, maximum value is 200. You can save that. That way you can see the data bars and you know the quantity and who wants the most quantity. Now besides just the simple custom conditional formatting here, if you really wanna get clever, you can go into the list settings and go into the product or any of your columns and you can see here that it's done uh, some of the JSON for you. So you can take this JSON, right? And then write your own. 
Um, people have created some really neat things. There's lots of custom um, JSON writing that people do with their conditional formatting. I just searched Google real quick and you can see, you know, you have people who've done maps. Uh, they have maps in their um, conditional formatting pie charts right into SharePoint. So this is just a, a great way to look at your data in SharePoint. And so I'm not sponsoring any of these websites. This is just what Google brought up for me. So yeah, there's custom uh, JSON, JSON writing you can do here. All right, so we showed you some things you can do in SharePoint. You can group by, you can do conditional formatting, you can add colors to your SharePoint list. All right, I'm gonna show you another way to display the data. Now this is a, my SharePoint homepage. It's connected to my SharePoint list or my SharePoint list is connected to this homepage. Another thing we can do in here is add quick charts. So quick charts, we can connect our quick charts to our data. So get data from this SharePoint list. All right, so on the right hand side, we can do column charts, pie charts. We're gonna do get data from our SharePoint list and it's the item sold. So in one column, we'll show the quantity and then the product. So you can see right here, we now have quick charts right into SharePoint. Let's go ahead and keep editing because I want to show another one. We can show the bar chart, right? So if we do quick charts, we can get data from our list, uh, items sold, quantity. Let's do customer name this time. And this time we're going to do a pie chart. So we can see, you know, here um, a pie chart of our data. So this is another way to display the data. Since we're talking about the Power Platform, you know, there's more you can do. Of course, there's Power BI. Now I could make thousands of video about Power BI, but I'm just gonna give you a brief introduction. So let's say your data is in SharePoint, in a SharePoint list, it could be in Excel, it could be in the Dataverse, but you can connect your Power BI to that SharePoint list. And so I'm just going to put my site URL in there. Connected our SharePoint list to Power BI. And it's going to ask us, you know, which um, table. It's called the item sold table. And then we could transform and do Power Query on this using Power BI. Now, when you go more into Power BI, there is um, licensing behind it. But you can easily just come in here, put a table down, and you know, just connect the table right up to what you want to see, adding the fields that you want to see. All right, so then we can also, of course, come in here and do a pie chart, and we can do the quantity with the product. Let's see if we put it in the right places. Right there, that'll work. Uh, maybe not, oh, I got it backwards. Let's do legend up here, quantity down there. Now we can see which product we sold the most. You know, we have uh, Gear 2, color-coded, of course. This is Power BI. Um, there could be thousands of videos, millions of videos on YouTube about using Power BI. This Power BI desktop is for free. You can download it online. As soon as you connect your Power BI um, to the cloud, uh, maybe you want to work in tangent in a team, you know, there is a licensing model behind Power BI. All right, so this one is a lot more complex, but I just want to show you this option for SharePoint framework examples. Now this does require some knowledge of coding, um, but maybe you have someone on your team that, that can understand this stuff or, or, or someone who wants to, uh, you know, display some of this in your SharePoint. But I just typed in SharePoint framework examples. And if you go in here, you know, there's all kinds of examples of people using list data and they're displaying list data in different ways and they've created their own web parts. So you can see right here, you know, they have the teamwork organization. Um, they have new charts. So they're displaying this on their SharePoint, right? They have new types of charts. This is just using list data, right? So it's modern charts. Someone customly wrote this code. Uh, there could be so much information about this. I just wanted to show just a little bit of a sneak peek of what you can do. Um, so once you have that data in SharePoint, you can create some custom SharePoint code and put that in to your SharePoint site. Now I do have a video of me setting up uh, SharePoint framework my first time. So it is on my channel if you wanna, I'll probably put in the, the description of this video, but I have set up SharePoint framework for my computer and I show you how I do it. Um, some people do it differently. 
Okay, now finally, I've been saving the best for last. Excel, right? Everybody is comfortable with Excel. I'd say 90% of people are comfortable with Excel. Now, in our last video, we did show that we can write to uh, Excel or we can write to SharePoint. But let's say we didn't write to Excel. What we can do is we could connect by Power Query, right? People like to connect by Power Query. But I figured that Power Query can be a little bit slower than connecting directly to that database. Now, what I do is I go to Get Data, and then I go to From Other Sources. Now, there are people who can build OData feeds, and there's lots of information about that. But I'm just going to show you the basic way I do it. So we go to From OData Feeds. So I'm going to connect to my SharePoint list. Now, I have already uh, set up this uh, URL here, so you can see it's the uh, your site. It's your SharePoint site, sites, then this is your sites net site collection name. And then you're going to add underscore VTI bin list data, et cetera. So I'm going to paste this into Excel. I have my URL in here. I'm going to blur out my site collection name. But when we click OK, it's going to try to connect to your data. And it's going to ask for credentials if you, if you aren't signed in. But I am signed in at the very top up here. And pretty much this looks exactly like Power BI except for I'm going to do it in Excel. And I know a lot of people are much more comfortable in Excel. Now you can uh, do items sold here. And I'm just going to load. You can transform your data first, but I'm going to load. Now the reason I've been saving Excel is because people are so comfortable here. And, and when people add comfortability, you know, it just makes it so much easier. And another thing is, is Microsoft probably won't show you this way because they want you to use Power BI. Um, if you put this Excel in a SharePoint list and you save it there, or in a SharePoint document library and you save it there, it, it's secure, right? So we have our data in Excel. Now we can hide things. So I'm just gonna go through the columns here and hide a few of them. Hide a few columns here just so we got some of our data that we want to look at. Now we could build this in, um, you know, transform the data and make it look better than we, we want. We did this part of the video just because I wanted to show you this part. So you can go into insert, right? And do insert slicer. I wanted to show you this part up here. Insert slicer. And then we can do things like, um, let's see, customer name. So we can put customer name in here into our into our view. And we can say, you know, just filter it by Andrew Hess. We have a slicer. We can build a report here on Excel. This is just Excel knowledge. The more you get into it, we can build into it and say, you know, customer name, just boom. Look how fast that is. I think this is faster than Power BI. I feel like, uh, you know, Excel runs really quick and people are comfortable here. We can add another slicer. Let's do insert slicer and let's do it by um, uh, products, right? So let's just do product. We want to see certain products. And of course, we can come up here and change the colors of our slicers. So we can change the colors of our slicers, make it look better. Um, we filtered on that. Uh, we can then come up into view and then remove the grid lines, uh, remove the headings, right? So now, like, we have this beautiful report that we're already building. Um, and when, when you hand this off to a CIO or a CEO or, or even your supervisor, they're really going to love this. And then we can just come in here, you know, and remove the slicer, see the information. We can make our table design look better. People love, you know, things looking better. So now we like actually have this Excel that doesn't look like Excel anymore. Another thing we can do is go to insert. I'm going to do a pivot table, right? So pivot table, and it's going to use the uh, table range right there. And so we have our pivot table. It all automatically did that for me. We can do customer name and quantity so we can see a sum of quantity it's already pivoted that table table for us we could do product and quantity all right so let's make a little bit more space we're in excel people love excel look at this we already got the data for gear one we can come in here and add another slicer let's say we added a slicer and let's do it just by uh product so now we have a slicer. Our data is still in SharePoint. We can just, you know, view gear one. We can see Andrew Hess, Superman, 
Uh, they wanted gear one, and they wanted a grand total of 115. Gear two, boom. We're, we're just, it's just so fast. The things we can do with this data uh, so quickly. Uh, we can do insert a, uh, let's do a pie chart here, right? So we can do uh, maybe a 3D pie chart. We have a 3D pie chart. We can design this how we want. We have the data in Excel. Um, now you're saying, okay, well, we got the data there. Well, I want to refresh. Well, all you have to do is come up to data in the top and click refresh all. Let me make sure you can see that. Now I brought the, the Excel down a little bit so we can see. So if we want the data, let's go ahead and update it. So I'm going to go back to Power Apps. We're going to do a new order, and this one will be uh, Wonder Woman. And she's just going to order Gear 1 500. Oh, 500. We're going to add and write to SharePoint. Okay, we now have new data in SharePoint. So if we go back to our items, we refresh, we can now see at the very bottom that Wonder Woman has an order. So let's go back to Excel. All right, we're in Excel. The data is not updated yet, right? We On the right-hand side, we don't have Wonder Woman. If you go to Data, Refresh All, and you just hit Refresh, it's going to hit that SharePoint database, add Wonder Woman into our data. So now you can see we do have Wonder Woman here in our data. All we did was hit refresh. If we go back to this page, we can now see that Wonder Woman has been updated. So we can see that Gear 1 now has a purchase of 500 of, from Wonder Woman. This did kind of you know mess up our pie chart, but that's okay. So we have this data in Excel. Now you can create amazing amounts of things in here, right? So you can insert you know pie charts, add it in here. And another thing to do is once you have all this data in Excel, is to come up to View and hide the grid lines, hide the headings, hide the formula bar. Well, you can leave the formula bar. But now we have like a white sheet of paper in Excel. We don't see all those grid lines and it doesn't look like Excel on this page. So we could leave this tab up hand this off, send an email if we want to. We can leave the Excel in a SharePoint list. That way it has the security we want. And we can now update this. Now I just want to show you a little bit more of Excel. You can come in here and do conditional formatting just like we did on, on our SharePoint. So let's say we did uh, conditional formatting on the quantity. So we could set up different color scales on the quantity here, set up different scales on our quantity. We can add our red, yellow, greens. We can hide different fields. I just wanted to give this option to people because I know most um, Microsoft consultants are not going to show you this. They want you to be in Power, Power BI. They're trying to push you into Power BI. But the power of Excel, a lot more people have knowledge in Excel than they do Power BI. Of course you, you can learn Power BI. I, I recommend learning Power BI. I do know Power BI. I'm certified in Power BI. But the the power in Excel, you know, Microsoft loves the power words. So now that we've had our data out of Power Apps, we put it in SharePoint, we put it in Excel. I just wanted to show everyone what you can do, analytics, how you can pass this data on to your supervisor, your CIO, and impress them. Um, adding colors, adding graphics, all kinds of things that you can do to your data after Power Apps is going to impress them. They're going to love it. The more you simplify it for them to read the data, the more people are going to love your work. So thank you guys for watching. I know this was technically not about Power Apps, but it's what you do after Power Apps. So if this was helpful, please like and subscribe. Uh, I'm so glad to have all of you as my subscribers in 2022. I'll see you next time. Thanks.